Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at the newest release of Nix OS 21.11. And I just booted into it. I'm going to give you a heads up. I tried to open it in GNOME boxes. It would not open. I switched over to VirtualBox. For some reason, it wouldn't let me set my display settings the way I wanted to, so I've just booted into it. So when you boot into it, it's going to say, Welcome to GNOME 41. Do you want to take the tour or no thanks? I'm going to click no thanks because I want to try to get over and fix the display issue. So I'm going to go ahead and go to activities. Let's look up displays. Okay, let's go ahead and set this. But it's not offering me the 1920 by 1080, so I'm going to have to go with the 1680 by 1050. I'm going to go ahead and apply that and keep these changes. So I'm going to have bars on the side, and I do apologize for that. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we produce, you can support us by becoming a member, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. First thing we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to NixOS's website. Let's make it bigger. And like it says, NixOS 21.11 has been released. It has reproducible builds and deployments. Nix is a tool that takes a unique approach to package management and system configuration. Learn how to make reproducible, declarative, and reliable systems. And then if you scroll down a little bit, it tells you right here that they are reproducible. Nix builds packages in isolation. Basically, it keeps all dependencies for one application in and of itself as opposed to sharing dependencies across other applications so that way you don't have to worry about your system breaking. Declarative, Nix makes it trivial to share development and build environments for your projects, regardless of what programming languages and tools you're using. And then reliable, Nix ensures that installing or upgrading one package cannot break other packages. It allows you to roll back to previous version and ensures that no packages is in an inconsistent state during an upgrade. And then you can choose from thousands of packages. They have over 60,000 you can search for right here. I guess we could look for something like GIMP. See if they got GIMP. Well, it might help if I spelled it right. And there's GIMP right there. So I'm going to double check in the operating system to see if we can actually download software from in there. But you can also search for packages on the Nix website. So I'm going to go back. And if you go to the top of the page, they've got Explore, Download, Learn, Community, Blog, Donate. So should you have any questions, zip on over to the website. I'm sure you can get them answered. And it's a pretty nice website. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And as it states, this is GNOME 41. First thing I want to do is right click and see if we can change the background. And they've got a couple different ones here. I think I will go with something like that. Takes a little bit of the gray that we were dealing with away there. So we can go over here and look. Now, first thing, I want to go to activities. And I want to see if there's a way to install applications Control various applications permissions. Let's look for software. I don't see it, so let's just scroll through and see what we can see in the menu. You got contacts, weather, maps, disks, terminal, system monitor, password, Nix manual, and Xterm. So it looks as though you're going to download all of your applications from the Nix website. I'm going to go back to the desktop. You go up top, you've got battery, volume, internet, of course. Then you click on that, you've got your wired connection, settings, lock, power on and off. Then you come over here, you've got your date and time, and then, of course, your calendar's right here. And then your notifications would be right here. And then you could also turn your Do Not Disturb on to shut those notifications off if you wanted to. And then today's events, you could add world clocks if you would like to. You can select a weather location. Let's click on that. Let's start with the city. Let's say Dallas, Texas. Let's go Love Field. And there's your weather. So let's close out of that. And if you come back up here, it should load your weather down here very shortly. And there it is right there. So we can close out of this. It is now up here. You can go get your date, time, calendar, see your weather, look at your notifications. That is one thing I really do like about GNOME 41 is it sets and makes everything real easy in that area. So we'll go ahead and close that. We'll go over to Activities. Down here on your dock, you have Firefox, which we just looked at. You have Geary Mail. Geary is rather easy to use. It's a really sharp email client. 
You can just go in here and pick whether your Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, plug in your info and it'll load it right up. I'm going to go ahead and pick Outlook because I do have an Outlook account. I'm just going to throw my info in here real quick and show you how easy it is. Okay, I've entered my email address and it is now populating. I'm actually on my trash folder, so I'm not going to show you none of my important emails. I just plugged it in. No problems. It didn't ask for anything other than my password. And you've got your email right there in your system. So that's a quick way to set your email up in GNOME 41 using Gear Email. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. We don't need that to run anymore. Go back over to activities down here. You've got your calendar, which we pretty much looked at up top. But let's look at, go ahead and look at the application. And calendar pops up. It looks like a calendar. I mean, there's nothing real special I can say about it. I guess if you right-click on here, you can add a new event. So let's say... Uh, personal edit the details we'll make it all day long starts today ends today repeat add a reminder no notes we'll just say location is Dallas and click done and it lets you know here there's personal there's your event now if we close here or let's minimize this let's go up here and it has it listed right here so it's right there in your shortcut so we can close out of that. You add your event. It'll show you right here where it's at. So that's pretty nice. So let's go back over to activities. Down here, you've got music. You've got photos. Let's take a look at the music player. So this is your music player. Everything that you put into your music folder will actually be displayed here. So that's pretty nice. And it goes right along with the theme of everything else. Let's go ahead and close that. Back over to activities. Then you've got photos. And then you've got files. Let's go ahead and check out our files. And files is a nice file manager. It's lightweight, it's quick, it just lets you get work done and stays out of your way. Over here, you've got your usual suspects, and then over here, you've got your home folders listed, documents, download, music, etc. Now, if you wanted to make these bigger or smaller, you just come to this little arrow, click on it. You could adjust it from A to Z, Z to A, last modified, size, type, or reload. And then if you want to change the size of the folders themselves... You could go over here and make them bigger, smaller. That's up to you and up to your personal preferences, but that is your files file manager. And then back down here, let's go look at all applications. You've got contacts, weather we've already looked at, clocks, maps, archive manager, videos. Now, if you wanted to add videos to favorites, we could do that, and it pops down here in your dock. And then connections, calculator, text editor, character, terminal. Let's open up terminal. I want to see if they have HTOP installed out of the box. And they don't. Let's try top. And they do have top, so let's double-click that and make it bigger. Right now, I've got 3 gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual machine. At present, at rest, with just the terminal open, we're using 800 megabytes, which I would say is probably mid-weight. I've seen some distros as low as two or 300 megs, and I've seen some as high as 1.8, 1.7. So, 800 is kind of a mid-weight, so that's what you'd be looking at if you use Nix OS. So, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got system monitor settings. Let's go ahead and check out settings. Over on settings, you're going to have network, Bluetooth, background. We've already looked at when we changed that a while ago. Notifications, you can come over here. Notifications are on for these applications. Now, if there are any of these applications that you don't want to receive notifications from, let's say disk usage analyzer, you can come over here and turn your notifications off for that and it won't bother you. That's up to you. That's just once you install it, no matter what distro you're using with GNOME 41, you've got all these settings. So I'm going to close out of that. Then you've got search, multitasking, application, online accounts. Online accounts is awesome. You can come over here and put in your Google accounts, your NextCloud, your Facebooks, your Microsoft. Now, if you've got mail accounts on Google or Microsoft, if you enter those before you open up your email client, it will actually pull your accounts from this to use your mail down here so that saves you a step then you've got sharing sound power displays mouse and touchpad region accessibility users default applications date and time and then of course about you come over here it just lets you know we got three gigabytes of memory we're using nix os 21.11 porcupine os type 64 bit gnome version 41.1 and then virtualization by oracle so we'll go ahead and close out of that then you've got disks, document scanner, text editor, cheese, fonts, gparted, logs, manage printing, Nix OS manual. Should you have any problems, you can go in there. And then your password and key management, you can take a tour. And then, of course, you've got a web browser other than Firefox. If you open that up, you can set it as default browser or not. And if I remember correctly, this is just called web. It's a simple, clean, beautiful 
view of the web powered by WebKit GTK. So we can go ahead and close out of that. And then if you do want to make it your default browser, just click yes, you're good to go. Come up here, do a search, eBuzz Central. And it's using DuckDuckGo. And there's eBuzz Central. So you've got a couple different browsers to choose from. And then we can close out of that. Back over to Activities. And then Xterm. So that's pretty much it. That's a quick look at NixOS. What makes it special than any other Linux distribution? You know, its ability to build its own packages and keep those packages separate from others. Uh, it makes them obviously easier to reproduce. So if you save a specific package or your desktop as it's set up and you save that image, you can transfer it to anybody or you can reuse it yourself. It just makes things a lot easier. If you want more information on NixOS, I'm definitely going to put that link in the description below. But let me know what you think. Is it something you might download, throw in a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a spin? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.